MovieWeb.com. And where are you from? Uh, originally, I'm from Germany. I grew up there. Okay. But I'm an American citizen now. Excellent. That's good yes. to hear. <laughs> yes, I'm very proud. Now, I want to say is, first of all, I love this film. Oh, it's thank you. one of the most fun times I've had in the theater this thank year. You. And going into the final moments of this film, I think it's like the only time in the last two years where I sat up and was like, I can't wait to watch the climax of this film. And I'm wondering how important was it for you to have like one of the best climaxes you could get in an action film like this? Because a lot of films really lag like in the last 20 minutes and don't really do the job. Right. Well, uh, you know, I am more of an audience member, you know, than I am a director because obviously I watch more movies and have watched more movies in my life than I've directed. So I'm a critic like you and often go, oh, how anticlimactic, how boring, and oh, they blew their load in the first act, and da da da, you know? Like I do all those, you know, th I criticize all those same things. So I am obsessive when I make a movie. On this one, I had scales. They all thought, Ray thought I was an insane person. I had scales. Um, that had the page count and what happens on the page count and where it's action and where isn't and I realized that sometimes there was too much in between and I mean I did all kinds of things to figure out if if action is a seven in the first act how can it be a ten in the third act you know on the scale so that was hard I changed the last scene I changed I think four days before we started shooting because I thought it was anticlimactic Really? Mm -hmm. It was the it, basically what was originally written was a fight between LBJ and Castle, and then a simple fight between Chicksa and Castle. And I said, "Well, wait a minute! It's completely anticlimactic. He can't have the same fucking ending with Chicksa that he has with LBJ. On top of it, the LBJ fight is going to be more exciting. It makes no sense." I kept thinking and thinking about it, and last minute I said, "Stop." This needs to be completely different. And then I came up with the whole, let's play a game, you know, mm -hmm. and that whole thing. And, um, and um, yeah, that's what we did. But I am, uh, I have, uh, I'm really insisting on it not being anticlimactic. So I'm right there with you. Well, I want to say is watching that scene where the Jigsaw goes and collects his army really reminded me of the movie The Warriors. I don't know if that's... Love so the Warriors. Well, I, I was going to say, after watching that scene, there's been talk of a remake, but no one could do it right. I was going to say, you'd be the perfect yeah, person to do it. a remake. Yeah, I mean, is that something... They, you know you what? Even... I almost think somebody approached me about that. I'm not sure. I feel like somebody came to me years ago that there was a script or there was a talk about it. Yeah, I love The Warriors. But also, I don't know if you've seen my previous film, Hooligans. But... I haven't, but I'm going to now after watching yeah. this. <laughs> yeah, you'll see. Then, then The Warriors thing makes even more sense to you. What I was going to say is the film really goes off the rails at points and I don't want to, I don't know if it's like touchy to say a little bit of it's campy or is that okay no, to say that? The You've heard that already. It's, but uh, Well, I purposely... Purposely, oh, of Chicks course. Chicks and Elbridge <laughs> are so out of, you know, the real world that you almost making an ass out of yourself if you try to make them serious. Like if I would try to make these two guys like the characters in the movie Narc, People would think I'm insane. It would not work. You have to go with the. T he has horse hide in his face. You know, he's a guy who calls himself Jigsaw. If you try to sell that like it's NYPD Blue, you're mistaken. I think. You know, good. I. So I just talked to a journalist just now who said I haven't laughed that hard in like since the '80s in one of those action films. I'm really happy that something like this is out there and I was like right on that's what I wanted good you laugh you should laugh it's over the top well it really does have that feel of an 80s sort of action film but yeah. it's kind of pushing the violence even further I did you see Rambo this year oh yeah and this kind of like takes what Sylvester Stallone did as far as the violence of that and continues to push it mm -hmm. and I'm wondering was that something you really felt strongly about is having yes. such a I violent film I remember seeing it and going I'm gonna have to top slice stone with this <laughs> violence I did really well <laughs> I did that because that's the competitive person in me but second the, the really more than anything if you've read one of the comic books the Max Punisher comic book this is the first comics I read I think when I was a kid oh well, actually, well yeah. the Max series is outrageously violent um, I mean most of the, uh, the people say I've created some great new kills and I did 
but also I have to admit some of them are exactly copied out of the comic book, the exploding head, um, the guy on the fence, being those are taken from the comic book and I just kind of think that if you're an 18 year old kid who spends his pocket money or the money you get at the ice cream store that you work so hard on a Max comic book every week because you love it and I make the film that you're going to spend ten dollars on your ticket I have to give you that otherwise let's not make the movie you know well I was gonna say I guess not the Max series but when he first came out is when I was reading it as a oh, kid yeah. <laughs> because yeah. I, I mean you're like well, the Max series, the, when you first read them they were less uh, brutal as they are the Max series is incredibly dark and incredibly violent but in my brain watching and I got in 15 minutes into the movie and suddenly I was having flashbacks of looking at the comic books and the graphic novels and you guys did such a wonderful job of having like the cinematography in this movie I guess and I'm wondering how did you go about choreog choreographing the whole look of the film because that was a that was a, a work that was hard work I first had to fight for this DP who I thought would be in my opinion the only one who can bring this to it I just had this feeling that he was the right guy um, he wasn't a studio DP he wasn't really proven yet so it was a bit of a battle to get him on um, once I did have him on, we, I tried to tell him and he immediately got it right away and brought a lot to it, what I want. I want to copy the Maxis, I want to copy the Maxis. We didn't realize until four days before that what screwed us up, what made us not like the comic book, is the fact that our wardrobe was, you know, all messy. And I said, all the wardrobe has to be the same color. That's the only way we're going to look like the comic book. And that's what we did. Well, and speaking of wardrobe, I've got to ask you, what is going on with Jigsaw's last outfit in this film? Because it looks like it came out of Eddie Murphy's closet circa the 80s. <laughs> well, he's obviously very vain in the beginning. And then when his, uh, when his um, you know, face becomes deformed, well, first of all, you notice his color shift goes from black, lighter, 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 to, uh, to white, you know, that's what we wanted to end it with. You can literally see it happening, and that all had its reason. But in the end, I said to my costume designer, I wanted to look over the top, I wanted to look cheesy, because that's <laughs> where he's going, and I wanted to look a little bit military, because that's going to be good for the recruiting scene. And that's what she gave me, and I thought it was great. It's just, when he walks like this, during, I, I'm just, every time I see it, I could fall off the chair laughing. You know? <laughs> well, it kind of also brought, like, a femininity to that character, too. That it is, but... It wasn't there in the beginning. Yeah, to be honest, it's a direct spoof that I squeezed in there, and I never thought anybody would actually let me keep it in there. But, lucky, you know, I did keep it in there. It was a direct spoof of the recruiting scene in Michael Moore's Far Fahrenheit 9-11, when those two guys kept walking, recruiting... Kids. Oh, that's right, yeah, yeah, yeah. I I totally took that and spoofed it. I didn't even think I said, about I'm sure that. sure somebody at the studio will say you can't have that in, but hey, it's in. <laughs> But it's one of the greatest scenes in the movie because yeah, I, know. I don't know. You were in the big theater last night for the mm -hmm. premiere, right? We were in the like other overspill theater. Oh, really? so yeah. I don't know what the reaction was last night to ours, Huge. but our screening room was having like the best time yeah. I've ever seen at a too. press screening, and I was just like floored by it. So. Yeah, yeah. Oh. No, I was too. I'm telling you. I mean, I haven't slept. I'm running on pure happy adrenaline. <laughs> From what I've been hearing on the phone with journals and you guys, it's just a dream come true. I'm, I'm almost like I want to do somersaults. It's mind blowing. Now, you know, it's great of Lionsgate to do this because when is the last time they have taken one of their genre films and shown it to journalists five days before? Obviously, they knew that they had a great, you know, faith in this in this film. But the fact that it worked out like this is just mind blowing. Well, the rating on our like website shows it's like really strong this weekend. But I'm wondering because just from my own point of view, I saw you know The Punisher, and I'm familiar with the other film, and I had no idea what I was going to yeah. get walking into it. Are you a little bit worried that they think they're going to get like the old Punisher? Because this is something um, well, I'd say almost completely different what, than before. I, it's a perfect scenario what happened now. People saw it and they loved it. And people had the greatest time laughing out loud. I think I cried at one point when they <laughs> laughing out loud at the grenade blowing up the guy. I literally... The guy so, yeah, somersaulting? There was such a big reaction to it that I was so touched that I started crying, which made all my guys laugh next to me. <laughs> I was just so... But, but here is the, the... The unfortunate part is this film comes with so much negative back package, you know, that... that, that um, that now, you know, there's a lot of people out there who have caught, you know, through, I see these things on the website, oh, this is gonna suck, you bomb, you know, it'll be in for one week, they don't even give it a chance because, you know, like me, when I first got the script, I was like, 
punish him, right? You know, <laughs> it does come not with the best reputation. I'm hoping that you guys can change it, and that's why we wanted to show you guys the movie five days before. Well, know? of course, we're gonna put the word out because this is like one of my favorite yeah. movies of the year. <laughs> I don't normally say that when I'm talking to someone. And, and but, you know what? A lot of hard people who said that to me, they said, "Look, I haven't given a B to a movie in the whole two last two years, and I've done it with yours." You know, <laughs> and so I'm like, a B, I'm giving an A plus. There you go. That's what I said. Why didn't you give it an A? He's like, yeah. I never give. I'm like, oh, you're one of those. <laughs> yeah, he's stuck up. But well, for, I, I, real quick, I want to wrap this up. Is first, I want to know what you're doing next, because now I think you're one of my favorite directors, oh, and I'm you. excited to see what direction you go from here. And also, sure you write that. I will. <laughs> well, I mean, I seriously wasn't expecting to see what I saw. I was really blown yeah. away by. It. And then, secondly, where are you going to go with this? How are you going to top this as far as a Punisher two? Uh. I don't think I would be around for the Punisher too. I did this. I mean, maybe for five, if they would give me final cut on it, but that I, you know, that doesn't even happen for Martin Scorsese anymore. I think that. Um, I, you know, this was one journey, and it turned out really good for me. I'm not going to push my luck twice. Uh, I think for me to top this one in this franchise, I really would have to have total freedom, you know, which for people who spend $35 million on it is hard to give, and I get that, you know. Mm -hmm. I think I have to jump to another studio and, um, you know, go from there. I, I'm looking at other comic book films. Um, I'm hoping that Ray returns to the franchise and I'm rooting for Ray to direct the next one, you know. Oh, is he interested in that? I oh, know that. I'm making him interested. <laughs> I, you know, any other director is going to be screwed at this point mm -hmm. on the sequel. You know, what are you going to do? Do it like this, do it completely different and then everybody's going to be on your ass for that. He is the one that actually my team would be returning to him because they love him so much and he's completely immersed in, in, uh, in, in The Punisher, you know. He could do it. Well, that sounds cool. I have, so, I'm but, rooting for him. Let's campaign for him. You don't know what you're doing as far as the next project? I'm looking at a couple of things. The scripts have already yeah. gotten better just as of today, so now I'm going to wait another week and see how <laughs> they get done. <laughs>